Hello, welcome to Cerulean Arts Gallery. Tonight we're speaking with Kimberly Hakecht uh, in conjunction with her Cerulean Arts Collective Exhibition on view now through May 5th. Hello, Kim. Hi, Mike, how are you? How are you? Thanks for being here tonight. Happy to be here. So uh, please tell us a bit about yourself and the current show. Um, well, I've been painting in oils and doing representational painting for many years now. I think I have counted up to 18 or something like that. And I was, I learned to paint. My training is based in Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and the, you know, representational painting tradition, focus on light and shadow to create form. Um, and uh, that's always what's excited me about painting. So uh, although I find abstract and more abstracted art very interesting. What always draws me to want to make painting is just the the beauty of rendering light and shadow and form. Um, and so uh, I continue in in that approach. And I guess I would say the way my work has evolved over the recent years. Um, you know, is that maybe I'm more interested in these last couple of years in not just capturing the light and shadow part with really strong color and a lot of drama. Um, I've toned down the maybe the drama <laughs> or the more Caravaggio kind of strong contrast, and I'm much more focused in actually holding the the color palette pretty closely together so that I can get more of a sense of atmosphere. You know the kind of light is it is it cool daylight or is it warm sunlight and what time of day you know is it morning light or that late evening light so i think um that's probably the way my work has evolved and i've continued to want to explore that with this show i always enjoy working across um different genres uh i i love still life and um i think that that i like the most about that is i would always prefer to work from direct observation. I don't want to limit myself to that because sometimes there's, there are things I want to paint that, um, you know, you just can't do <laughs> on the spot. But um, I, I love painting still life for that reason. I've really tried to, in this show, explore maybe sometimes taking a different twist on not just different light sources in the still lifes, but also kind of coming at them in different ways. Um, you know, I think of the traditional way that we're looking about at here, they're often very arrayed in kind of a horizontal format where you're looking across the table. Um, and I've also uh, in this show explored kind of a different take where you almost have more of a sense of landscape with some of these where um, I think we're gonna come over to them now where instead of looking just straight across, um, oh, okay, we're I'll have to hold that thought, but. Um, the, the still lives that I've also painted kind of are, are more of a, like a landscape format. And I think we're going to look at those in a minute or two. So we'll hold that thought. Um, I've also included urban views and again, very interested in very specific types of light. This is, um, a sunrise in, it happens to be in the back Bay area in Boston, but, um, I don't generally try to to be very specific about location. I'm really, again, interested in a more universal subject matter. So this is Boston, but I think for anyone who's ever seen sunrise in a city, it's more about the play of light on buildings and rooftops and the orangey glow that is very magical and brief. And, and so that's what the piece that we're looking at now entails. Um, <clears throat> so for these ones, if it's a you know, not your like home location. Do you work from photo reference or drawings or? What, I, what I've come to, I've experimented with different things. I, I've always, if I'm interested in painting something, I've always taken a number of photos of the subject matter. So I might have a composition in my mind in the moment I'm seeing something, but I'll take, take a quite a range of photographs so that, you know, the camera cap captures different thing in the shadows than it does when you're in bright light. And so I really tried to get a range, but what I've, what I've been doing recently, um, especially when I travel and I'm not really planning to take all my paints or my, especially oil paints, which can be hard to travel with, 
is I just take um, a set of gouache paints, which are like the opaque water, sort of like opaque watercolor. And, you know, for me as an oil painter, it, it works well because I'm not dealing with transparency, but they're water-based. And I take kind of this limited palette that I can mix all the colors um, that I would need to get a sense for not just the details of the painting, but again, getting at that atmosphere. So I'll do studies in gouache if I can, you know, where I might be not setting up to paint plein air or a full painting, but I'll get enough information where I actually am capturing the colors from life or some different color key options so that when I go back to my studio, I have the details from photos and I might have some little sketches and then the gouache little color studies kind of complete the picture so that hopefully I can get to a place where, and I have a strong visual memory when I'm struck by something, I really kind of remember not just the scene, but I do remember the lights. So those things are all, all come into play and then I can hopefully recreate that stu uh, painting in the studio. Okay, so we were talking about still lifes at the beginning and the two pieces on the left here are some still lifes where I wanted to explore a bit of a different take where instead of looking across the table, you're looking you know, down the table and it's like almost creating more a sense of a landscape where you have a near distance, a middle and a far distance. And um, I guess they're also even kind of like stage sets like this one, especially where you have the the um, I think that's the a cycladic uh, statue of a thinker, um, and this is called natural history. And I just I wanted to bring together kind of all these elements, you know, the fossil, the plant, the shells. It just kind of like spoke to me to bring these together. And I I I didn't want again just to have the tabletop itself. I I find it interesting that that for me a still life can often be more interesting if you if you have more a sense of the whole space. Um, and in this one, I especially like the idea of having the window, not only because the thinker is on the beach and looking out the window, which I think are both, you know, ways that we often think, but, um, you know, even the natural environment and the light outside is a factor in the painting. And this one, you know, more traditional domestic scene, but again, I was looking to get that kind of different take of looking down the table and the vertical stripes work so well for, you know, to kind of really um, ground that, that type of approach. And uh, you're not just looking at the tabletop, but the whole, you have a more sense of the space in the room. And again, in looking for this sense of atmosphere, I find having those additional elements in the painting helpful because it just, it grounds the viewer a little bit more and sharing my point of view, as opposed to just kind of having it be about the objects. So, and are these setups in your home? One of that one that we just looked at, I did in my home and I was using natural light from a window nearby, although I didn't feel it was adding anything to have it in the painting. The painting we looked just be, at just before that I did in my studio and that window is kind of in a little alcove uh, in my studio where uh, it, there's not a lot to do other than store things in there, but I feel like it's kind of the, the permanent still life area because I love using the natural light and I can put a table in there and I, it's north light. So um, other than in the summer, late, late in the day, it, it's a really wonderful place to paint still life from natural life, uh, natural light, excuse me. And do you work directly on your canvas or are you, how do you transfer your drawing? There? I'm very much a direct painter. Um, I used to, because I, this is in my studio as well. This is an, this is sort of an interior and still life. Um, and I, again, I was very interested in the light inside and also the light outside. But to answer your question, I, I used to start my paintings in the sort of a tonal underpainting uh, to really lock in the light and shadow. And I've really shifted to just starting fairly abstractly, really focusing on um, kind of big blocks of colors to figure out where things go. And then I kind of refine it. Um, I sort of work from most very general to more specific and try to kind of 
as I re when I really feel like I have a sense of the space and the light to sort of populate it with the objects, but getting that sense of atmosphere and the space kind of come first and then the details more naturally work into that. So what artists do you do and in, or inspire you? Who do you think about? Um, well, I guess it sort of depends on the um, source, but I, or the, the subject matter, but I think um, recently I've been looking a lot at the perceptual painters. So Philip Geiger, um, his wife, Elizabeth Geiger does very interesting things with still life or she was. Um, and uh, I find um, with the, with the more urban kind of views, really looking a lot at um, Lopez Garcia. And I looked at him though for interiors too, especially when I was doing the piece in my studio where I was including uh, the bathroom and the bathtub. So Antonio Lopez Garcia is very inspiring. Um, yeah, just a lot of, um, a lot of contemporary painters, uh, recent, you know, that, that work in these different genres. And this is what we're looking at here as an interior. Uh, I had done this in a, it was kind of an old fancy building. <laughs> it's actually a, a school. And this was the room was kind of furnished differently, but I loved but the, the kind of the bones of the room and the light coming in it. And some of the furniture that's here were in the room. And I was just very interested in, um, it was winter light and capturing that sunlight pouring in. And um, again, because it was more about the atmosphere and the light and the color of the light in the room, I kind of simplified a lot of the kind of took a lot of the stuff out and was much more interested in kind of the furniture's there. So it's not, it doesn't feel empty or lonely or without scale, but it's, it's very, and it's very interesting to see how the light plays on that and the blue sky reflecting on the table and the sun hitting the chair. But it's, um, it's much more again about this sort of sense of this light and atmosphere more than the things themselves. And your work is very depopulated. That is, there are not a lot of people in these spaces or no people. I think it's my hope that as you look, that you are you are experiencing what I am. So you are the person in the painting. And um, you are standing there ready in this particular this and I you know I really enjoy these indoor and outdoor spaces where you have a sense of place with the interior and the light coming inside but a big important part of what makes the painting interesting is also what's outside and you know I know it's certainly something I'm very drawn to is I I love a good view out a window and I love a pretty room where the room itself might be welcoming or doesn't have to be pretty. It could even just be welcoming or interesting to be in, but that there's this interplay between what's inside and what's outside. And I tend to want to paint a landscape more that way than just the landscape itself, because I feel like that's where you're bringing human presence. It's, it's, this is what I'm seeing in this room, and you, as the viewer of the painting, are the are the person. So you're more interested in the space than like a narrative or a picture of something. Yes, and sharing that with you, it's like a it's like oh, here's this visual memory or this um, moment where I took that in and went like, wow, that's really interesting, or. I get a feeling from that, that, you know, I think here we're looking at two paintings. These are both based on subject matter from Maine. And again, it's about, I think people have very strong emotions about a kitchen. And so here's a beautiful scene of, I think we've all seen many beautiful paintings of Maine's uh, 
coast and the water and, you know, that's, um, it's lovely, but what grounds me and, and makes this like a moment and it's a moment I experienced and wanted to share was you standing in this space and it's a kitchen and it has a sense of coziness or comfort and the beautiful morning light is coming through. So it's like kind of bringing those two ideas together. And though there's not people in it, a lot of times, um, if it works in the painting, I really try to bring human presence through, you know, uh, personal objects, or in the case of a kitchen, things we all know we would use, bowls we would eat from, cups we would drink from. So again, the, the human component comes in, I think, through the setting or the stage, and then the light and maybe the view out of the window brings brings the other element to the painting. And this is, you know, same kind of thing. This this painting is called Boat Builders Workshop and uh, a place we visited uh, this summer. Um, there's a family connection, but what I thought was so interesting um, is again, so much activity goes on in this space and the light pouring in was beautiful. Um, and there was just so much stuff everywhere for boat, you know, boat building and carpentry. There were tools, there were parts from boats, there were, or, you know, in this case, the oars. Um, and so the interplay of the light and the space and there's the window and, you know, there's nice green grass outside. So it's pastoral, but at the same time, it's like, uh, here are all these things that people work with and make things with, and you're not seeing the person there working with it, but you know that that's, that's what it's there for and that's what it's used for. So it brings together again, that idea of kind of a space or a setting and then the light and the environment. Well, it's a great show. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be at the gallery. And the show is up through May the 5th. So we hope people will come down and check it out. Everything's also available on our website, cerulearnarts.com. And thank you for um, being here tonight. Thank you for uh, talking with me about the paintings. It's been a pleasure. Great. And have a good night. Thank you. You too.